Hi, my name's Hannah, and today I'm going to be showing you this really cute card made using the Adorables collection from Tonic Studios. It's a range of really gorgeous stamps with a lot of white space. They're photopolymer clear stamps, so you can be colouring in, bring in your Nuvo markers, use your Aquaflows, really go to town and enjoy colouring in these gorgeous images. So, to start, we're going to layer up. So we're going to start with our Nuvo pens, and we've got a couple of the images already pre-cut using the matching die sets. And I'm just going to colour them in, giving a little bit of layers. So we're going to start with the body of our gorgeous little hedgehog here. A little something for Harry stamp set, and I think you can really see just how cute these images are. So when you're colouring, especially with our com markers, using the nice ultra smooth white card, just dab on and what we want to do is start building layers. So the idea here is to give a little bit of a textured effect just by dabbing on the alcohol markers. I tend to work in areas so I kind of follow the lines of the stamp set that has been laid down for me and it's just a really nice relaxing way to pass the time. So we're going down with our first colour. This one is Ginger Peach, just to give quite a nice warm look to his body. And again, all the way over. When we get into areas where we've got larger spaces in which to colour, we can start using much broader strokes. And again, don't worry too much about overlapping colours because we're going to go in and build texture using layers of our colour markers. So, just coming to his little feet, colouring that through, and like so. Now if you wanted a really, really smooth finish to that, you could go over a second time and add a depth of colour, but we want to add texture. So we're going to concentrate on where there would be depth and shadow within the stamp, and just go in and almost stipple with dots to create darker areas. This kind of gives your stamp a little bit of context as if there's light shining onto it. Again, towards the bottom, we want to just add in that stippling effect. And you can see how when you're layering the colours, you get this lovely tonal difference between the colours there. A little bit more there. And just rounding off like so. We can go in with a second colour. This one is Sandcastle. And again, using the fine tip end, just layering up to create more depth and again more texture like so what i like to do just as a final finish whenever i'm creating textured layers or trying to blend my alcohol markers i go in with my first color again just to smooth and blend those through okay he's gonna need his little spikes and things coloured in. When you're colouring, I suggest always start with your lightest colours and work in the same direction as which the spikes would be going. So again, just brushing that alcohol marker out towards the edges of his spikes. This one is called Brown Sugar. I think you can see just what a gorgeous colour it is. Nice light colour for your base, ready for your stamp. So just again, colouring that through. The stamp itself has these like little guidelines to give texture in the fur and we're going to be building on those again just as we did with the body to add more texture in. Adding those in and colouring through. We want to add in, as I say, a little bit of texture so we're going to go to this one, a little bit of brown and we're just going to highlight where those little lines already are just through the design, you can see how that's starting to pick up your texture, and again, just working down in colours. This one's hazelnut truffle, just following in, but again, building where there would be more depth of colour in the design. And finally, just for another, just a little bit of pop to your background, this one's vintage walnut, a nice date brown there, just going in with those layers, and concentrating that where there would be darker areas too. Just as we did with the body, we're gonna finish off with our lightest color, just to smooth that all through and blend. Like 
like so. Now I thought he needed a little bit of personalization there. So we're gonna add a little bit of a rosy cheek going on. We're using cantaloupe and tiger lily. And we're just gonna make a little circle either side for his cheeks. And don't forget his nose. To the center of that circle, I want to just pick that out with a much darker pink. This one's tiger lily. Just a little dab to the center in a little stipple. Make it look like he's blushing. Blending out with your first lightest color, like so. Okay, so we've got one little hedgehog. He obviously needs a little bit of context as well. So let's go with some leaves. We've got Persian lime, and we can just quickly color these in. This is all on the same cardstock, so it is the ultra smooth. Again, perfect for your nouveau markers. Just coloring that through. I always tend to like to put down a base color first and then I can add sort of my depth and my tones over the top. But I work, if I've got a sort of three of one image or, or however many, I tend to work with base colors across all. Um, this helps me remember what I'm doing, but also makes sure that tonally and contextually everything then matches. So we just colored that one in. And final leaf now like so. You see with the fine tips you can get right into all the little edges and corners created with this gorgeous stamp set. And there we go. We add our deeper colours just following where you would naturally get those deeper colours on the leaf itself. Just following the little veins of the leaf and towards the edges of the leaf there too. And same again on the third leaf. I'm going to add in just a little spot of darker colour. This one is bamboo leaf. And we're going to concentrate that just to the veins of the leaf there as well. And again, just blending through. And you see how that gives you sort of more depth and interest to your stamp design. Finally, we've got our little snail that we can colour in also. I wanted to bring in a little bit of orange at this stage because my sort of theme for the card is going to be this gorgeous orange card from the Craft Perfect range. So I thought what better way than to colour our little snail in this first colour, our base layer, which is butternut squash, just following the spiral of the shell round, like so, adding a little bit of depth, first off with the butternut squash and then coming in with spiced orange as well, just for a nice sort of hit and depth of colour there. And quickly blending that out with our original colour. See how that softens the edges as well. We're going to finish off now with a little bit of sandcastle. It's kind of tying in with the colours we've used on our hedgehog. But this is just going to pull the design together. So you're repeating the colours you're using in the background of the card there as well. Like so. So I've got all my elements ready to go. We've got our card base also ready. I'm using a top fold card and I've used a combination of die sets from Tonic Studios there just for our rectangle. I'm going to use a little bit of acetate, which I've got some red line tape on the back of. This is going to form a shaker element to our card. Just peeling off the backing of the tape. With your tape and things and your acetate, if you're working with these, it's always good to use a little bit of anti-static um, if you're going to use shake cards because you don't want your sequins and things all sticking to your acetate front. And we're going to use a little bit of foam tape and scissors. If you're making a shaker card, use your foam tape but start at the top or what would be the top of your card rather than making your join at the bottom and just follow your tape around the edge of your die cut circle like so and let it overlap slightly so you get a nice good join just in the centre there. Snip the excess away before you peel off the backing, we're going to add some of our ice white circles from the confetti range, Nouveau. 
just for that shaker element. These are really cute. They catch the light nicely as well, which I think is quite nice in a card design. We're going to peel away our excess from the shaker and I've pre-cut a little bit of this gorgeous orange from the Craft Perfect range. Sort of a woven texture to it. If I can get the tape off, there we go. And that will seal those sequins in place. So just line that up, press that down, and our little sequin should be nice and sealed in place. I'm gonna add a few little foam pads just to the backing here. This helps raise the card panel off the surface of the card blank. But I'm gonna probably double them up because I like a little bit of height to my card designs. So peeling off the excess there and adding just another couple of squares. Like so. And our second one there. I want to pop one along the top. What I'm going to do is just trim them down and again double that up. So just on the top there. So we've got something holding the top of the card in place. And add in a second layer. So it should give us enough height just to clear the shaker of the card as well. Bring in our card blank, always check that it's up the right way, because that's something I often tend to do is make them upside down and back to front. We're gonna just position that so it's lined up top and bottom. Just give that a little press so it's stuck down firmly. We can start arranging our little creatures and things around our circle, our little aperture that we've created. So I'm trimming down a couple of bits of the foam there, just so they're a little bit of a smaller size ready for our creatures. Just a little bit on the back there, one on the bottom, another on the top. Like so. And again, we're just gonna have them so they're sitting slightly over the aperture, but raising them up kind of gives them a little bit of height, a little bit of context to your card as well. We're gonna need to snip that down just a smidge for our leaves and our snail. I always like getting sort of big foam pads because it means I can choose any size I want for them. Add a little snail in, like so. And our leaves. Kind of arrange them in a little cluster towards the top, just so it's framing that aperture of the shaker card nicely. So we've got one coming in in one direction. And the other. Just going in an opposite direction. And then finally for the third one, I tend to work in threes or odd numbers just because it just balances a card out more. And our first one goes just like it's falling down from the tree, like so. We just need one more thing to finish our card, which would be a little sentiment strip across the bottom. Now, all of the stamp sets come with a sentiment as well. You've got things like thank you, for you, I believe in you, really nice positive sentiments there. So let's grab our stamping platform and we're gonna pop in and hold in place our little sentiment strip there. Throw it around that way, I think. I've kind of created like a little banner shape for it, just so it sits nicely and I think we'll go with We'll go with a thank you, because that's always a nice sentiment. Everyone likes a thank you card. Line that up. And then close the lid just to pick up that stamp there. And let's use Black Shadow ink. Hybrid ink from the Nouveau range. Just patting that down to transfer the ink to the stamp. And again, because we're using the stamping platform, I can go in a couple of times just to make sure I've got a nice clean 
press from the image there. Like so. That looks gorgeous. Let's move our sentiment out and move our stamping platform to one side and finish with a few little foam pads to the back again so we're just raising up that design for our sentiment ready to stick to the front of our card. Well, let's pop one in the centre as well just so it's nice and secure. Peeling off the backing like so and then just lining that up to the edge and pressing down and there we have one finished card using the Adorables range from Tonic Studios. For our full range of beautiful products head on over to the Tonic website now.